Discord, so all three of my Discord friends, one of them being you, <laughs> can see <laughs> I'm streaming by my Twitch. It's okay. I don't have very many Discord friends either. Uh, hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome We're to uh, the to the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. We are on the internet. Um, and there's a uh, there's a lot going on in the internet today. Yeah. I mean, it started it started yesterday with the stuff, oh. but it continued today. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, you know, and I'm not on any social media except for the occasional, like, go, when I'm on a computer, I actually use Reddit. But, you know, I don't have it on my, I'm trying not to have it on my phone anymore. So, with that being said, though, uh, even I heard wind of the Activision being acquired by Microsoft. Um, and then you tell me of this interview before we're starting, which I'm <laughs> sure you found many wondrous ex more examples for us. Yeah, I mean, I saw the um, the Microsoft Blizzard thing earlier this morning, yeah. and I was like, you know, that's pretty shocking. Um, million dollars cash. Yeah, <laughs> so there's certainly a lot to talk about. Are are you caught up on Book of Boba Fett? Did you watch episode uh, three? I I did watch episode three. Um, got a little bit slower again. Seems like except for the new Rancor, I thought that was interesting. Love to see the big Danny T, Danny Trejo. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot. Then, there was a lot of hate for um that episode though. Oh wow! Like that I saw out there, like it. I mean, I, some of it I kind of get. Like you know, people were, like hating on like the the mopeds and how like bright and shiny they were and shit. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, like, I I understand some criticisms, but other ones it's like. You know, d does it completely throw you out of it to see people with, you know, <laughs> little <Fair. laughs> colorful? I mean, the mirrors kind of threw me out of it. Why are there so many damn mirrors? But yeah, I yeah. honestly, the speeder chase scene, like they were trying to use practical effects, and man, the I just kind it kind of looked like the whole sequence kind of looked like shit to me, to be honest. But I'm that doesn't mean I'm gonna bash on the episode, like because it made up for it with some of the rancor stuff. That was episode three, right? That yeah, was yeah, three. Okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Just want to make sure I'm remembering right stuff. <laughs> but, uh... No, you're remembering correctly. Yeah, I mean, they're a weird swoop gang. I've seen worse, like, you know, it's a swoop gang that has, like, a, a thing going on with colors, so whatever. <laughs> or I, I call them a swoop gang, but I'm sure, like, there's some sort of other kind of speeder gang. Um, I thought they were kind of boring, one-off characters. Maybe they'll be around, you know, they're just hired muscle, apparently, at this point. Um, I think it's interesting the idea they're building where he's essentially rebuilding Jabba's palace uh, one person at a time, which I thought is pretty, I think is pretty cool. Um, you know, like he's got a new Rancor Tamer. I'm pretty sure he's going to get a new Major Domo soon. Um, so yeah, you know, hopefully we'll just keep collecting a little interesting cast of characters to have in the palace, and hopefully we'll just see more Boba Fett flying around doing cool shit because again, he's not wearing the helmet too much. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, still he's still not he's still not wearing the helmet. Yeah, even the most intense fight scene when he's fighting that awesome ass badass Wookie, like he's like naked basically. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an odd thing. Um, hold. how we doing? Oh, we're good. I'm just uh, I'm trying to prepare for the for the news part. But, that's uh, a good thing to do to prepare. That's that's such an effective way of going about doing this. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Instead of having you right here, and then the news right here. <laughs> hey, I'm <laughs> like, I'm I'm getting there. Right there. I'm getting yeah. there. Yeah, that's good. Um, good yeah, yeah. The I mean, I it, like the thing is like I think a lot of people like um the Wookie, right? Black Crescent. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know he had a name. <laughs> yeah, he has a name apparently. Yeah. Um. But like, oh my god, what the fuck? Sorry. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Language. <laughs> um. God damn it! Watch your fucking mouth, dude. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. There are children watching this show. <laughs> um, <laughs> Trying to get them monetized on YouTube. Come on. Yeah. Exactly. Um. I mean, it's just like. Some people don't like him. Some people do like him. People like Wookiees and dislike Wookiees, and 
the rancor and blah blah blah. I think people just like to complain, to be honest. Uh, That's if, it's, if you're looking at the internet right now, you'd probably be right. Like I said, yeah. like it was it was just an okay episode. Like you know, the whole season has just been kind of mass so far, which is disappointing because you know it's supposed to be like their flagship for the rest of the rest of the Mandoverse. Um, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Right. And. I, like I mean, again. it's Dang. like it is interesting enough. Like, oh, uh, but like at the same time, it's like it's not right. Like, there there are parts of of Book of Boba that are like really interesting, but then there's other parts that it's just like, yeah, meh, whatever. I mean, like, and it, I don't know what your opinion is on like all the same people being murdered or whatever or any of that, but oh, that's right, that happened too, and he wandered away. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I really, <laughs> the problem is I really think that whole story should have been like the first two episodes and then we should have started getting into this stuff now. Yeah. I, it was, so, th there's this thing going on and like the excessive use of flashbacks to essentially cover for lazy story writing, you know, and it really disjoints the whole plot it can't kind of lose helps makes the you know viewer lose orientation because now they got to keep track of what fucking timeline they're in rather than just watching the piece of fiction in front of them right um i'm trying to change how this looks good luck don't hurt yourself Oof. thanks i'm hurting myself <laughs> um, I don't want that. I believe. Why? Why doesn't it let me stack them? Can I stack them? I. I don't know. I streamed like once for like thirty minutes, and I just didn't do it. <laughs> so you're in your own homie. Mm. Hide members. It doesn't let me stack them. Okay. Well, we tried. We tried our best. Uh, That's all that matters. That's all we tried. No, now we're full screen. Escape. Okay. There's that. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so just finishing up with that though, again, like the story of him with the sand people should have been told a lot earlier. Like it should have been like the first two episodes, just just all that. And then moved on to him getting his armor back and taking over the palace. It's yeah, I I mean like the direction is just kind of what it is, I guess. It, it's in, it's interesting enough. Um, do, 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 but yeah, all right. Let's talk about some news. All right, let's get into it. Did you want to do the Whedon interview first or the Activision? Uh, we'll build up to it. All right. What else is going on? Moon Knight? Yeah, we're going to hide our faces for a while. Oh, boy. Okay, never mind. Uh, display browser window. Mm, this one. Nope, it doesn't even show up. All right. See I give beautiful, up. See this beautiful background of. Yeah, it isn't. It is a nice background, isn't it? It is. Hmm. It's very odd. Oh, it's because the window is minimized, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. That might have that might have something to do with it sometimes. Jesus. All right. <clears throat> Here's some news. Um. So you just watched the Moon Knight trailer. Yep. Um, yeah, so there there was a Moon Knight trailer, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's 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 it, you know it's it's inter interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, for people who don't know anything about Moon Knight, uh, Mark Spector is Moon Knight, and in comics he's like former military, but he has like schizophrenia and like all sorts of mental health issues, and um, he. Uh, you know, gets granted 
powers by the Egyptian god Khonshu and so on and so forth. And it's actually pretty interesting stuff, even though maybe it doesn't sound that interesting. Uh, but in the trailer, uh, we, we, we see Stephen Grant, who's played by Oscar Isaac. Uh, and uh, yeah, Stephen isn't his name. He's actually Mark Spector. But I think, uh, like I said to you before we started, I, I think um, it's they're trying to personify this, right? This is disassociative identity disorder. They're trying to like, make that uh, a very visible thing on screen mm-hmm. um and steven is just one of those personalities he seems to be completely unaware of mark or his alter ego moon knight uh, which is true yeah in the trailer we seem like not really knowing the things he's been doing uh mm-hmm. he, he says he can't discern between dreams and reality um which makes sense um given this dissociative identity disorder right it's like i never saw split but i imagine it's like that um have you seen that movie no no oh, okay. right, that's the one with like he's like in a wheelchair right or... uh it's it's the guy who plays professor x um yeah. who like yeah has all these different personalities um yeah i've never seen it but yeah it's a m night shamalama ding dong movie <laughs> um yeah so mark slash steven is also the fist of Khonshu, the egyptian god of the moon uh there are a few glimpses of Khonshu in the trailer and uh yeah uh do, 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 can't say any we can't assume anything's real apparently according to this article but uh here's the official description of the show the series follows steven grant a mild-mannered gift shop employee who becomes plagued with blackouts and memories of another life Stephen discovers he has dissociative identity disorder and shares a body with mercenary Mark Spector. As Stephen slash Mark's enemies converge upon him, they must navigate their complex identities while thrust into a deadly mystery among powerful gods of Egypt. Um, here's the poster. Moon Knight. Moon Knight's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, we also saw Ethan Hawke's character in the trailer. Um, they don't really tell you who he's playing. Some people speculated that's Dracula, but we see him in the daytime, so it's probably not Dracula. Um, mm-hmm. and I think if you turn on like closed captioning, they do credit uh, his name. And um, the name attributed to him, I don't remember the name exactly, but I know the character in in comics <laughs> is just kind of a nobody. Uh, he, he was in one issue of Moon Knight. Uh, he's like a scientist who like does ex- who like wins a Nobel Peace Prize he does experiments on people that like they didn't know about so um that's how he got it like that's how he earned the Nobel Peace Prize is through experimentation on, on people and then like he has them attack Moon Knight and then that's then he escapes in a helicopter that's like his entire <laughs> appearance in comic book history um so we'll see if that's the actual character or or what it turns out to be but yeah what did you think of the trailer I thought it was cool. There's a lot of punch, punch, a lot of crazy. Uh, I love Oscar, Oscar Isaac, but I don't know, read comics. I don't know anything about the character at large. So, did um, did you feel like you got a sense of what the show would be about watching the trailer, or did you feel like you have no idea what's going on? I got a sense that this guy is the Moon Knight, and it's probably going to be kind of like the first season of Daredevil. That's what my thought was. Where you know, where he kind of doesn't really have his costume yet. He's got kind of like a minor backstory, but not really a full one. And then he beats up Kingpin or some other major player and, you know, gets a suit. And now he's like, oh, now, and then at the end of the season, will be like, oh, now I'm the Moon Knight or whatever. Uh, at least that's how I framed it in my brain based on what I've, you know, there's only like a minute and 30 seconds. So it's not really a lot to go off of. Right. I do think it's like, it's something new for Marvel. Like we haven't really like gone more into that horror kind of realm before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is interesting to see uh i am also interested to see kind of like you know what else comes of that um and and if they keep trying to do new things right like we've seen a lot of new things from marvel in the past and hopefully we'll continue to see more new things yeah uh this is a cool thing you know we got a batgirl show coming out and we got a we got a picture of a costume for batgirl Leslie uh, Grace I... is playing Batgirl. Um, are you aware of any of this? Have you been? Not, no. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. 
I haven't even watched The Flash yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm far behind in The Flash. But yeah, Leslie Grace is playing Batgirl. It's going to be an upcoming show on HBO Max. Uh, this Batgirl costume is reminiscent of uh, recent iterations of Batgirl from like uh, 2015, 2016, maybe. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I remember reading those. I, I thought the costume was sick. I have like uh, statues of like Batgirl in this costume. Uh, just because I think it's like a, f a really cool costume. Uh, the, the only thing different is the cape and the suit itself in comics is a little more like bright purple, whereas like, it's mm. a little darker. But yeah, the cowl looks good. Everything looks good. So it's yeah. uh, I'm glad that they decided to keep a more complex color palette other than trying to make it like, you know, modernize it with like more tactical looking you know colors yeah like, 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 uh, like kevlar like vests and uh, yeah whatever bulletproof vests well the only time it worked was in dark night because it was really cool <laughs> and like they had blades on the side <laughs> yeah uh man, god the batmobile in that movie was so freaking badass too oh right yeah Sorry. Nostalgia yeah. moment, but I just think it looks good, and hopefully, you know, eventually we'll watch the show. Um, I know also I think I saw the the trailers around my on my feeds, uh, that like the Peacemaker shows out now. The yeah, HBO the R first three cool. episodes. There's gonna be eight. So like I think they do three episodes week one, and then every week after that is one episode. It comes mm -hmm. out on Thursdays. Yeah, I watched the first three episodes. Are they good pretty good yeah um yeah. i definitely enjoy it i mean I, a lot of people really liked like the opening like uh like theme song part mm -hmm. and I, I don't know i thought that was kind of like way too tiktok influenced and tiktok bugs me yeah same. like watching people dance like tiktok dances like i don't know it's, it's really odd like uh, i i don't know but i, it, I don't know watching people tiktok dance makes me uncomfortable and i don't know why that's a personal <laughs> issue okay it's just a strange phenomena that's like hidden because you and me are used to inter interpreting the internet solely through using like English or well, not even English, but just through using language solely that like we don't even have pro pic my picture on discord isn't a picture of my actual face. Whereas in TikTok is so immediately personal since you and I are a little, uh, we're both a little <laughs> social awkward, maybe just an immediate turn off for us. Yeah. I think, I think in general watching anybody dance makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I just think it's because me and you are probably both miserable bastards. Maybe. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> we just hate fun. <laughs> my my friend got married recently, and like, a part of his wedding, like he he's like, "Oh, I have a surprise for you," and I was like, "What? Okay, I don't like surprises. It's kind of weird." Oh, exactly. And then like, so like he's having it like he, he comes up for a dance, you know, like with his new wife, and they're like, mm. "We're gonna invite." you know you and your wife since you got married this year to come dance with us and so we're just um, standing there wait, during, like, during the first like no no first, i don't okay. know i don't think it was their first dance but it was like just okay. like so i was gonna I, say if that was like the first dance like he just dropped that on no, you they without, had their the first dance <laughs> and then they then then he danced like with his mom or whatever like she danced yeah. with her dad no no sorry no, okay uh, i'm not gonna go into that but she danced with her mom um yeah. <laughs> and then um yeah, and then they're like, okay, here's a surprise. You come down with your wife. And, like, his sister also got married last year, like, the same year we got married. So, like, his mm. sister and her husband came. And, like, the three of us all, like, were there just with, like, hundreds of people just watching us. It was so <laughs> uncomfortable. Like, I was just like, I'm just like, I was just like. Uh, you just wish you just tell his your wife just telling I'm you, hey, look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. <laughs> My my wife is just like, why are you being weird? Stop being a weirdo. It's like, it's fine. <laughs> just, but just I'm dance, a weirdo, God damn okay? It. I'm just like... Listen, okay, like, bodily... It's like dancing is just everything I hate. It's like close, immediate, intimate body contact. Like, you have to follow a set pattern, and naturally, because I'm just... A, asshole i want to do it the yeah best. i mean so, like and i like you know i like you know being with my wife and 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 like, i don't mind dancing with her but like i don't want people watching <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean it's like oh don't uh, worry i don't think anyone wants to win that yeah N none of us want to watch that trust me no no one wants to watch me try to dance either trust me all right i mean yeah I, okay. like, i just like, realized on the twitch stream we're not we're talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the thing is like my first ever experience dancing 
Oh, oh, someone someone posted a like a uh, a dancing Ryujin dancing emoji. Look at that. Yeah, color, yeah, that's, that's exactly that, emoji. That's the exact opposite of how I look when I'm dancing. <laughs> <laughs> when I was when I was ten years old, I lived in in West Virginia, right? Great state. Yeah. No, it's not really. Um, and I and I was dating this girl who was like friends with my sister, and like as kids dating, like you you think weird things are cute, and so we thought it'd be cute to like get fake married, and yeah. like <clears throat> so I went I went to like my next door neighbor's house in our apartment complex, like, and we was like she was gonna marry us, like, and like straight up like. The my girlfriend at the time who was like twelve and I'm ten like is in a full on wedding dress and they're like well you have to dance so I'm gonna teach you how to dance right and this like sixty year old lady who's fake marrying us is trying to teach me how to dance so, like do these little steps and like you know okay step step twice to this side and step twice to this side and just you know do this and, and I'm just like man i'm terrible at this shit and but but we did it we got fake married and we had fake first dance okay there you go Good practice and then i cheated on her with my 15 year old babysitter there you um go. life's a bitch yeah I, it's funny i i you know i was in my heyday when i was like 10 years old and now i'm uh now, now you're a happy married man this now is your better i'm a happy married man yes and you look over to your wife and let her know that you love her <laughs> Uh, she's working. She doesn't care. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, there you go. She knows I love her, but exactly. she, there you go. Yeah, she doesn't. That's all that matters. She doesn't need me to tell the world. She's a very, <laughs> she's more more of a private person than I am. So, yeah, it's always nice to be private. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I haven't gotten married yet, and I've only well, I used to dance, but like it was because of my so my god like so my godfather was a DJ at a strip club, right? At a strip club. And so we used to have strippers at his house all the time. And my parents used to like, but uh, sometimes my parents would leave me over there at his house. Like, and he was really, he was, he was great. Uh, but he also had all the strippers over all the time. And he had like an area where they could practice. Cause you know, pole dancing is actually really, really hard. Like to be good at it. It's actually really hard. Like, yeah. You need a lot yeah. of core strength. You need core strength. You need amazing athletic like, control of your body. You need to know where your head is at all times. Like, are you can seriously hurt yourself? And like some of these chicks were like amazing. <laughs> it's super funny so i was like eight years old and then <laughs> we went on a cruise and oh. then you know my parent my parents like you know they would like throw us in a little kids club like you know that all every cruise has like they have like this little daycare that you throw your kids to if you don't want to fucking deal with it. so everyone's like okay kids we're gonna have like a dancing competition <laughs> I, I was like uh, i need a pole it's like what Oh god! I was like, well, I know how to dance. <laughs> That's the only dance I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, you gotta work in, just like do this and that. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, good times. Yo, Atolia in the chat. Why you say bruh with this bruh. with this emote? Huh? What is that? <laughs> what is this bra for? Huh? Yeah, dude. Strip, don't don't handle those strippers. They're great. Those ladies were super nice to me. They used to give me sodas. <laughs> I think she put it in the chat when I was talking about getting married at ten. Oh uh, well, you know, shit happens. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. but that's our. That's why dancing is probably extremely awkward for both of us because I got normalized to a certain kind of dancing that I was told that was not normal, and I never wanted to do it again. So there you go. <laughs> Imagine being normal. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, okay, here's here's a big here's the big bit of news before the bigger bit of news. Hmm. Um, there we go. Microsoft will buy Activision Blizzard. Betting seventy billion dollars on the future of games. On the future of games, yes. Uh, it's kind of like I, I, you know, I've thought a lot about this today because obviously it's big, big in my field because I'm a huge one. I'm a huge MMORPG fan, and two, they hold on to a lot of IPs that I love, um, such as Overwatch. Even though Overwatch Two is kind of a joke, so I've got to put. <laughs> this I gotta is the put same game. Out. Yeah, I got to put this out there right now, dude. Like people are like oh my god like this is microsoft like you know being a monopoly and like no 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 you don't understand like their risk managers are probably going fucking ballistic they're probably sending a lot of angry emails to bill Gates. <laughs> well, yeah. couple... and it's... blizzard's been a pr nightmare the past year because of the sexual assault cases yeah. exactly and now if the lawyers representing these victims of sexual assault are have are like ever with any legal assault they'll demand more money because now they're owned by microsoft one of the biggest companies in the world 
Right. <laughs> and it's not like, you know, you, you don't know how these things are going to happen. Like, it might make PR better for Blizzard. Like, oh, they're owned by Microsoft now. They're going to clean house and do all these things and make it better yeah. or whatever. They're probably going to just absolve them into Microsoft. Well, like, like that's what a lot of companies do, right? They buy smaller companies or they spend a bunch of money on other companies. And then they're just like, well, you guys already have a, a structure and a culture and a system we'll just observe and maybe give you input later or, or, you know, merge later in, in a, in a more, uh, complex way or whatever. But like a lot of times, like you don't buy somewhere clean house and put all new people in. like, you, yeah. you need to learn the business first or the company first, and then you'll work to, to replace people or move people over from current Microsoft stuff over to that company or whatever. Like, yeah, it doesn't happen uh, overnight. Honestly, I would be surprised if in a year we learned that they're just taking game titles, they're like ripping them out, and then they're probably just gonna, I don't know, fucking trash the company, like because it's just a nightmare. Like you know, people, it's it's lost. It's just it's a gaming company in Los Angeles. I couldn't imagine a worse, more toxic work environment. You know, <laughs> you know, like it's just, it's just so. God, they're so full of themselves. It, it, this is why I don't understand why everyone's complaining because like this is like World of Warcraft is failing miserably like and it's modern iteration. The only, the <laughs> so only much so that like every big WoW streamer is playing Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy fourteen because it's yeah. just a better it's just a better game. That's just the fact of life. It's just a more complex, more interesting game to play with more depth than World of Warcraft with a better rating scene and better boss fights. Because the thing is about uh, World of Warcraft bosses like there are like these stuff you have to run between you know to get to the boss and it's always been kind of pointless and everyone just wants to fight the boss you know so right. final fantasy 14 cut that shit out but they also kept it in in certain other areas where it's important to feel like you're on an adventure going through this dungeon uh it's just a better game 100 percent. and classic is they're just turning it into some weird esports thing that i don't think anybody wanted so it turned off a lot of regular passive players like myself that just wanted to just you know, smoke weed and then log on, play World of Warcraft for an hour, then log off without having to worry about someone keeping track of my stats. Is and that thing? Me off. Does anybody yeah. play World of Warcraft for just one hour? I I, I used to <laughs> back before back before it was like you had the because the thing is it was it was a marathon. It wasn't a sprint like it is now. Like everyone's just sprinting towards end game. They're not enjoying the game, and the scene is just so toxic. Everyone's just min maxing everything. You know. The world just doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel like World of Warcraft, you know, this is the thing, like, for the first few months of Classic, when everybody was just having the nostalgia trip, it was great. But then a bunch of people started mid-maxing it, they started playing the maximum powered classes with the best gear, and they would, like, you know, be rolling all these random, just doing all this shit to maximize it out the ass, and it was just, it's no fun. No one wanted to talk to each other, they were essentially, like, they made a Dungeon Finder 2.0, and then it's just, killed, kind of killed the community. And it kind of sucks. Yeah. And I'm sad that it happened. But... I, I feel like the only thing Blizzard ever had going for them was their cinematics. Well, they had that. And they also had Diablo, which is a very good IP before they had the mobile announcement. Well, Call of they... Duty too, right? Call yeah, They have Call of Duty and then they have Destiny. Destiny is also an amazing game. And I know it has actually a core group of really dedicated players. Uh, so, you know, there are people that play Destiny all the time. Uh, I'm sure it's not the biggest title in the world, but it's still a title that's able to sustain itself, a.k.a pay for its own servers, pay for its own employees, and then probably make a little bit of extra profit. Hmm. Is um, Rainbow Six Activision or no? No, no, I don't think, I don't believe so. I, it's, it's on Steam, oh, it's on it's, Steam, uh, so it can't be. Is it Insomnia? No, I have it's, no idea. Anyway, we'll we'll get into it. I'm sure they'll mention it in this article. I'll, I'll start yeah. reading it. But uh, I just got to point out there, like, this is a very strange, like, I think personally that this is a very strange dis business decision by Microsoft. Like, I really don't think it's a good idea. I kind of think they just blew $70 billion. Like, but we'll just see what happens. Like, hopefully. Yeah, I, it's a, it I, is a big risk. I mean, like, yeah. the thing is, like, the entertainment industry right now is, is the biggest thing on earth. I, I mean, yeah. it has been for a while, but, like, COVID like, made People crazy amounts of money for entertainment. People want to be entertained. Things suck yeah. right now. Like, you know, it's just... It's, it's we all need escape, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Way to do it. Uh, Microsoft plans to buy the powerhouse but troubled... Uh, <laughs> powerhouse but troubled video game <laughs> company. That's certainly one way of putting it. Sinking ship is another yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> For nearly $70 billion, it's biggest still ever and one that places a major bet that people will be spending more and more time in the digital world. 
The blockbuster acquisition announced on Tuesday would catapult the company into a leading spot in the $175 billion gaming industry. Games on virtually every kind of device from bulky consoles to smartphones have gained even greater popularity during the pandemic. Technology companies are swarming around the industry looking for a bigger share of attention and money from the world's 3 billion gamers. In an industry driven by big franchises, Activision makes some of the most popular titles including Call of Duty and Candy Crush, which I don't imagine makes them a whole lot of money, but... Uh, Candy Crush? Oh, dude. You have no idea, man. I know people love to play it, but, like, all their money has to come from, like, adverts on on stuff, right? Like, people aren't... Like, I know it's, like, pay to win in some ways, but, like, are people actually paying to win Candy Crush? Sometimes they can, like, you know, old Asian ladies and... <laughs> with bank... With big-ass bank accounts. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ching. Yeah. Uh, yet the company has been roiled in recent months by an employee revolt over... A revolt, sorry over accusations of sexual harassment and discrimination. Microsoft framed the deal as strengthening the company's hand in the so-called metaverse, and in the, the nation world of virtual and augmented reality. The metaverse has attracted huge amounts of investment and talent, though so far uh, is more of a buzzword than a thriving business. Facebook renamed its parent company to Meta late last year to underscore its commitment. Yeah, that was a terrible announcement too. Yeah, okay, so there's this game, right? It's called Second Life um basically i uh, i think that's what metaverse is probably going to turn into um so you know people are just going to learn the hard way what happens when you just have a social gathering game on the internet um well, doesn't that already exist isn't uh what is it called uh, 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 uh vr vr chat yeah well it's not exactly the same but in yeah, no, yeah, it's just a bunch. It just turn, eventually just turns to a bunch of horny people being horny in corners. That's what um, VR chat is. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, people can keep betting on metaverses. Zuck can keep zucking as much as he wants to make of this a thing, but it's just gonna be ruined because the only people that are buying VR, it's buying VR gear, is gamers. So they're the only people that are gonna have. It. Well, yeah, the only people buying VR gear are 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 gamers, gamers with a lot of money. Or yeah. streamers or sex addicts. Yes. You get that fake <clears throat> robo robot vagina dude that vibrates with the Jeez. sex game. Yeah. Oh, dude. You get they have like heads now, they like suck you off. It's fucking crazy. Jesus. Crazy. It's fucking it's, it's singularity. Yeah. It's the, we're crossing into the singularity. Yeah. Uh in the yeah. worst way possible. We're stumbling over the singularity. We're not fucking like striding forth boldly into the future. We're like drunkenly stumbling our way forward into the future. <laughs> on, oh man. On that note, the article yeah. continues, but the focus on the futuristic metaverse belies the significance of the deal in the present. The acquisition helps Microsoft gain on its rival Sony and the long running battle for gamers' attentions and wallets by offering top titles. It also helps the software giant stay ahead of powerful newer competitors in gaming like Amazon and Google. I, yeah, that's true. Can I, can I just interject real quick? Yes. Uh the reason Sony sells so much is because Sony makes really fun games that are really good to play. And they're also capable of getting exclusives on, on PlayStation, you know? Exact that's exactly Demon Souls is still an exclusive on PlayStation five and I like, still not able to play it. Do we honestly believe like Microsoft buying Blizzard, they're gonna make like it's certain games, games exclusives on on Microsoft? Like are no. they gonna make Call of Duty ex Microsoft exclusive? Well no, because I mean, you might say, well, that and more people will buy the, the Xbox so that they can, you know, it, but it's like, we don't live in a world necessarily of console wars anymore. We live in a world where people who want systems will get systems. So yeah. most people who want to play games like Call of Duty have both an Xbox and a PlayStation already, right? Yeah, it's like a PS4. You can get one for a hundred bucks now. It's crazy. They, you know, it, it's just, and it's barely even a step behind. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Phil Spencer, the chief executive of Microsoft's gaming business, said that when whatever the metaverse may end up being, gaming <laughs> will be at the forefront of making that mainstream. Uh, for now, he said the acquisition was about gaining a stronghold in mobile gaming, which, uh, I mean, it, it, I'm surprised mobile gaming is as popular as it is, to be honest. Uh, where Microsoft barely competes and a studio that produces hugely popular games. He called Call of Duty one of the amazing entertainment franchises on the planet. Uh, it is. Gotta go, always give him props, dude. The main single-player campaigns for Call of Duty are always just fucking crazy. Wasn't the most recent one terrible? Like Vanguard or whatever? Is that Call of Duty? I, I, 
I don't know. I think it's multiplayer. I'm not sure. Probably they had made they had a shitty campaign. I haven't played it because I haven't played Call of Duty in a long time. But dude, mm-hmm. like the original, at least the ones they keep re-releasing are dude, like Modern Warfare 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Like, ugh, they're so good. The campaign's crazy. You're just doing crazy shit like you're getting onto a Russian submarine while, you know, the Bay of New York is turned into this giant warship battleground with missiles and helicopters flying everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get on board the sub hijack and have it shoot missiles at the other ships. And then you drive away on a speedboat while an Apache, like while a helicopter comes and picks you up from the bank <laughs> and, and then you're machine gunning people on jet skis coming at you while you're flying away. <laughs> and it's great. It's so much fun. It's gamer. It's just made. It's why, it's why gaming is great. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Um, oh, this is, this is the most fun paragraph in the entire uh, article i bet here we go <laughs> federal regulators may raise concerns about the acquisition as democrats and republicans alike have pushed to limit the power of technology giants on tuesday the justice department and federal trade commission announced a new effort to broaden how it should determine if deals are anti-competitive um i mean <laughs> well, i mean they is, can go ahead <laughs> well, it's just one of those things like Big government is bad and big business is bad and everybody knows and everybody acknowledges it, right? Like, we need yeah. competition for the market to favor the people. Like, that's how capitalism should work. It doesn't always work that way. But you look at companies like <laughs> like Disney, like, they they bought Star Wars and Marvel. <laughs> I mean, they bought Marvel before Marvel was Marvel. So, like, yeah. you know, it'd be hard to push against that. But, like, it, it, they made deals with Sony, like... They they own the box office every year, but but nobody's saying, well, we should dissolve, you know, Disney into a bunch of smaller organizations that run independently because people want this, right? Like, antitrust laws exist for a reason, but, you yeah. know, when you – it seems like there's not a lot of good um, objectivity with it. Like, it's hard to be objective with stuff like this, like – it becomes yeah. like subjective, like oh that well, Disney isn't isn't too big, but Microsoft now is way too big. Like well, we we also got to think about this in the time, you know, antitrust laws when they were founded back in the day. Uh, what was it, General Oil or Standard Oil? What it was like, you know, the biggest oil company. Uh, you know, they were sending trucks of people to go beat up other starting oil companies, right? <laughs> and, would, and then they would drive away, you know, stuff like that. Uh, we're not talking about it's not like disney's going onto these sets and beating people up to steal like you know their sets from them they're just buying them straight up and in this instance too activision blizzard to me is a sinking ship world of warcraft which was their biggest name say is just i didn't understand i didn't think it was possible to kill world of Warcraft, but they somehow managed to split their community in two and then make both those smaller communities hit the game even more i don't know how they managed to do that but they fucking did it you know it, it's just it's fucking hilarious uh overwatch had an awful launch it was they started it was esports centered and at the end of the day when you have such an esports focused game you're not probably not going to make it into an esport because the thing about the game is it needs to be fun to play and to have a big community like i'm playing dota 2 right now dota 2 is a huge esports scene because the game is fun to play people love playing dota 2 or at least the people that play dota 2 love playing dota 2 oh well if you ask them they fucking hate dota 2 but they actually love it and then so uh, Overwatch flopped and they did this rebranding with Overwatch 2. I thought it was kind of a fucking joke because, you know, it, the trailer was just so stupid. And I don't know. Like, I, I just thought it was a joke. Um, Diablo, everyone talks about the Diablo mobile, but that's just an issue with marketing. Like, that was a business error on their part. Uh, the, like, they made the big Diablo announcement, a Diablo mobile game, when they knew for a fact their primary Diablo fa- fan base was a primarily pc players you know you can't just invite all these people to this fucking pc gaming conference and then tell them oh hey for this game you all love releasing a mobile game isn't that the biggest news you've ever heard in your entire life of course people are going to be fucking upset it's it's really bad marketing strategy really really bad marketing strategy yeah so at the end of the day like this is a bad example for antitrust laws because it's well, it's, it's I mean, the thing is, like, Microsoft has always been a huge organization. Like, they, like yeah. Microsoft's been, like, what you want to talk about big companies controlling everything? I mean, it's it's Microsoft or Apple, right? Like, those are your two operating systems. So like, your computer, yep. Unless you unless you want to go on some like Linux based, you know, uh, friggin' Wikipedia <laughs> dollar store example of like a, an operating system, right? Like, 
yeah. you're not you're not going to get crowdfunded operating systems like that are legit businesses like the way Microsoft and Apple are like the- clean, efficient, self-sustaining gives you a really great package at a pretty decent price. I think it's only 60 bucks right now for Windows 10 Premium, which is a really good deal cuz back in the day it used to be like $200. And you can't do anything without it, right? Like without yeah. an operating system, your your computer is is literally a paperweight. Yes. Like yeah. So, I mean, like, the, 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 I, there's a difference. I mean, Apple comes with operating system. Like, you know, most PCs, like, if you're building your own, you have to install it yourself or whatever. Like, I mean, laptops and stuff have their own operating systems. But, like, it's it's either Microsoft or Apple, right? That's it. Yeah. So. And, um, um, all right. I guess I'll continue reading this this uh, this article. Uh, Microsoft is valued at more than $2.3 trillion, second only to Apple. The takeover of Activision would make Microsoft the world's third largest gaming company by revenue behind Tencent and Sony. The company said Microsoft now makes Xbox consoles and owns studios that produce hits like Minecraft. Um, Tencent, didn't, wasn't there some controversy around Tencent before? I have I no know. idea what Tencent is, and apparently they're one of the biggest camping, gaming companies in the world, so yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. out of the fucking loop. <laughs> They do a bunch of big games, I think. Uh, the game industry has been consolidating rapidly. A force behind that and one that could grab the attention of regulators is the arms race for exclusive content. Microsoft sometimes makes the games it, uh, it owns available only on its own devices, such as its Xbox console and unavailable on those made by competitors like Sony's PlayStation. Um, when asked whether Activision would uh, games like Call of Duty would become exclusive to Xbox, Mr. Spencer would only say that our goal is to allow the content to reach as many players as possible uh yeah this is like yeah this is like what i was saying before like it, they they could make exclusive but what's the point right mm. it's not going to prevent it's not going to make me like significantly more people buy xboxes to the point where like that's that i mean even microsoft like microsoft has always been different in the way they operated uh, compared to Sony, like Sony has like Spider Man and stuff like as exclusives, and not even available on Steam. But like, yeah. you and can also you can get after, Microsoft games, also, right? Like, yeah, on the uh, PC, on the PC. So yeah, we also have to remember that Sony is a company based in Japan, and the business culture over there is a little bit different. Yeah, they, uh, they'll they'll straight DMCA people for like doing Nintendo videos and stuff, like playing games on YouTube. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit more lax now. It was definitely used to be a lot worse back in the day. Like in the early days of YouTube, Nintendo was just, you know, they didn't want to they didn't want to do anything yeah. with YouTube at all. They were period. striking everybody's content. Yeah, they didn't have their own channel, like they didn't <laughs> it was just some funny shit. They were striking their own trailers to let you know how stupid it got. Like literally free press for that. <laughs> yeah. Um uh anything else <laughs> no i mean i i just can't i'm really surprised uh microsoft went forward with this uh to me it seems like a really shitty decision but if they can take these you know games and they can do something with them that isn't you know just taking them off the market forever uh hopefully we'll get something good yeah. Uh, Microsoft has been hunting for ways to spend its immense cash reserve, more than $130 billion, to expand its consumer business as it, look, it has looked at acquiring the booming social network TikTok and popular chat app Discord. Uh, mm. In Activision, which faces accusations that senior executives ignored sexual harassment and discrimination, Microsoft found a target under stress. The allegations <laughs> have weighed on Activision with its shares under, falling 27%. Since California Gosh. sued the company in July over the claims. Only, only a fourth of the company's value. No problem. It's fine. We're yeah. fine, guys. No worries. Uh, the game maker's uh, shares rose more than 25% in trading on Tuesday. Microsoft shares fell by 2%. Uh, yeah, so, probably because they took $7 billion out of cash. No wonder it's going to fucking yeah. hurt, impact the value a bit. Um, how much longer is Jesus? It's a long article. What the heck, man? Yeah, there's uh, a lot going on, but anyway, just, the the point is they bought it. <laughs> they bought it. I don't think it's a good idea. You think it's just business as usual? I, uh, you know, with that being said, 
I yeah. hope it goes well. I hope they can rebrand. Maybe they'll release. Maybe they'll do Warcraft Four. You know, maybe they'll. Maybe they will do something a little bit better with the game design team and how they. You know, what who they keep on the storyboarding and stuff like that. So we'll just gotta see what happens. Right. Uh. Wait. So the deal could take twelve to eighteen months to close, and people who work there are still upset because of all the nonsense. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it. That's the thing. That's the biggest issue, right? Is like, um, <laughs> thanks for thanks for posting some emotes. First time chatter, I fell off my chair. Yeah, no problem. I mean, uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, um, I think like the the biggest thing is. Activision and Blizzard, like Activision and Blizzard, Blizzard has so uh, so much controversy around it. Like Microsoft maybe helps that a little bit, and you know, and maybe in the long run something happens, but in the short term, like it seems like a very risky thing. I don't know if people have faith in Blizzard to, or in Microsoft's ability to make great games and do something to save, uh, you know, some of the things in the works. But but it to me like. There have been some good changes recently, like when Microsoft titles recently have been coming back to Steam, which is something that I'm really glad to see. Uh, Halo, uh, Halo is chief among them. You know, you can finally get mo- and uh, like the only reason you can't get Modern Warfare right now on the Steam is because of uh, it's on the Blizzard launcher. You know, you mm-hmm. have to download the Blizzard launcher and do it that way. And yeah, Battle.net or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, Battle.net. Um, like then. <laughs> Now that I think about it, it's funny how many people, you're right, how many people, like, yell and scream about, uh, oh my god, there's too much central power. Why isn't every game I want on Steam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do you have to have Steam, Battle.net, Epic Games, yeah. all this nonsense? The EA game... Origin. Yeah. Origin's really, yeah. Origin's okay. Um, I, I don't have Battle.net Launcher because there's nothing exclusive on there I want 100% yet. Uh, when it happens, I'll probably get it, though. I only did install a new launcher when there's a game I can get nowhere else. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Here's the controversy. Here's the oh, big man. piece of news from yesterday. We're getting into it. Joss Whedon did an interview. Oh, boy. <laughs> Why? That's the first thing. Why? Why, Christian? Crage? Why, Cage? Tell me, please. Well, um... <laughs> I... 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 I feel like his interview does a good job explaining why he didn't speak out sooner and it's because <laughs> uh he was only gonna say some bullshit um and and even after two years where i'm sure he's had time to uh get therapy and and pr training and, and extra help and and how to confront some of his past issues um even with those two years he still uh came out and said some bullshit um and and the thing is like i you know here's the understanding people should have right i i grew up in a household where we watched buffy the vampire slayer all the time like Mm. my i i was like five years old watching buffy the vampire slayer like every week as new episodes came on right all the time and you know and then angel and firefly and you know uh dollhouse and you know, mm-hmm. whatever else, everything Joss Whedon's ever done, uh, aside from like Cabin in the Woods, whatever he did in like 2014, <laughs> like I've watched. And I think Joss Whedon has done brilliant job, like a brilliant job in creating things and being a showrunner and whatever else. But I don't know who he is, and I have I have no inclination of his character aside from what a lot of people have come out and said, right? And as people start to speak, right, like Ray Fisher, you know, blew was blew the whistle like initially, right? And and Ray Fisher really annoys me, to be honest. Yeah. Like it just like the the way he conducts himself and, and and everything, it really annoys me. But without him, other people maybe wouldn't have come out and spoke. Like Chris McCarpenter, who who worked on who was like in Buffy, right? And yeah. um, other showrunners who worked. Uh, writers who worked on Firefly, like people who come out and 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 say, yeah, I've had bad experiences as well with Joss Whedon, right? Like, because if it's just one person, you're like, well, did did 
did they really do these terrible things or did you just take something out of context or or took something personally that wasn't meant that way or whatever else and like at the end of the day like you know this is how we are as people you know we sometimes we victim blame uh, what you shouldn't do but other times it's like well we weren't there we don't know i'm gonna take sides with the person i like or whatever personally i think you should never take anybody's side like i don't know ray fisher i don't know joss whedon i don't really give a shit about their their conflict with each other right like if i like ray fisher as an actor even though i don't like him as a person i'll continue to watch his movies or if i think joss whedon's a piece of shit but i enjoy the work he does i'll go see his other movie or whatever like th that's how i view things but that's not how everybody should view things people should always just you know do things the way they want to or, or live their lives according to their own philosophies and their own principles like i don't disagree with any of that i just think like joss whedon said some stupid shit and he's done a lot of really bad things like the the thing is like he can den he denies like in in his long ass interview he denies a lot of things right mm. but it's the things he admits to that are almost worse right like th that's the thing and 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 I, I'm a person who's all for, uh, rehabilitation and getting better. And like, you know, I, I'm, I'm opposed to cancel culture and it's in its current form and in previous forms, because, you know, these people with nothing better to do with their lives or, or whatever that like that, that don't really have any significant strife, think they're making a difference by trying to cancel someone who 10 years ago said some stupid shit on Twitter and now forever they should never get a job again or, or be able to make a link because you know they once said the n-word or whatever it is like it, i believe people can reform and be better and do better and if they've demonstrated that like why try to dig up their past and, and ruin them right yeah the problem with joss sweden is, is that like <laughs> now with that being said this interview uh let's see joss sweden does the opposite it, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. he he says, yeah, I've been a piece of shit in my past, but then uh, demonstrates that he's still kind of a piece of shit. A piece of shit now, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna look. The, the, I'll show you guys. There's this whole ass interview he did with New York Magazine. Ain't no way. Uh, look, I'm going up. This, this is going to the top, right? Like, look at all that. Ain't no yeah. way I'm going through all this bullshit. We can we, actually let's encourage our viewers to go and read it for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And absolutely. Get your own, exactly. Go read it for yourselves before you listen to us. Um, you can probably just Google Joss Whedon interview for whatever the fuck and f this, find this interview and read it. And we'll, this, you know. this interview could be published as a 60 page book, yo. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. It's a long interview where he goes through his whole career and talks about a, a whole bunch of things and, uh, you know, his his previous marriage and and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, whatever. The, I, I took a walk with Rebecca X around Huntington Botanical Gardens near... Who gives a shit, yo? Um, <laughs> she wore dark glasses. Who is Rebecca X? Oh, as she asked to be called... Oh, was known as Rebecca Rand Kirshner. Oh, yeah, she was a writer on Buffy. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 yep. All right. <clears throat> they didn't go into any of that in, in these uh, shorter versions of these interviews. Uh, but, yeah, I'll just read you what 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 this article says. So, yeah, Joss Whedon is responding to the Justice League cast and their criticisms of his uh, directorial style uh, and or the accusations of his abusive treatment of the actors while on set. The controversy around Justice League was swirled since before the film ever hit theaters in fall of 2017. Whedon was brought on board to direct Justice League after Warner Brothers and Zack Snyder had falling out during the production of the film, and Snyder left the project. Uh, just to clarify, Snyder partially left the project because of a falling out with Warner Brothers, uh, the thing, the thing people will say in comment section, especially is, well, he left because his daughter died and he was leaving to grieve or whatever, right? Which was how it was reported at the time. But Snyder has since said, like, he was already having issues with Warner Bros. And he thought, why the hell am I here working on this movie with a group of people that we can't even agree on anything instead of going home and being with my family, right? Like, yeah, it, it's a twofold thing. Like, it's not, he didn't just leave because of his daughter's situation. He also left because... 
him and Warner Bros. were falling out, right? Yeah. However, in the time since release, there have been more stories from cast members that Whedon was not a friendly or collaborative presence on set. In his <laughs> first time speaking up on the <laughs> Justice League matter, Whedon addresses some of the more specific claims that came from the respective stars of Justice League. Wonder Woman star Gal Gadot previously claimed that Whedon threatened to kill her career at one point. He said, I don't threaten people. Who does that? Uh, he then explains that when it comes to Gadot, English is not her first language, and I tend to be annoyingly flowery in my speech. Uh, he recounted a debate about a scene he had with the Israeli actress, which he claimed she took completely the wrong way. Uh, in her own email response to New York Magazine, Godot apparently counters that she understood perfectly when it came to the incident we didn't referring to. Um, they don't even bring it up, uh, what, what he said, uh, but I, I remember it, so I'll say. Um, so what happened is he, he said, and this wasn't the instance that she that like she said he threatened her career, but he said in an example of how she doesn't really understand the way he talks, um, she wanted to change a scene or whatever, and and Joss Whedon said to her, uh, if you want to change the scene, you'll have to tie me to a railroad tracks and change it over my dead body, right? <laughs> And then he said he got a note from the studio, like a complaint that like he had threatened her to, to like kill her and, and take off, like decapitate her on the railroad tracks or something. Right. Um, <clears throat> and look, this is a thing like, you know, I'm not going to talk about English second language, blah, blah, blah. But I, I will say like, even between two native English speakers, it's very easy to have misunderstandings or people who use words other people don't understand or examples like, you know, I might know an analogy that like I thought was common because I grew up in the Midwest, but I say here and people are like, what the hell are you talking about? That doesn't make sense, right? Which yeah. is, is a thing. That's, one thing I, I one thing. thing I do have one thing I do have to say though is that even if there was a misinterpretation, Gal Gadot's thought about how Whedon would talk to her and how he would like, you know, so she was basing that off of what he normally says to her and how he normally interacts with her. So she, he, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is still a bad sign for how the, like you said, what was it? He said he was a dis, just collaborative, not helping out on the set at all. Like he was just <laughs> making it worse. Uh, well, basically saying he was an asshole, but not saying the word, you're not using the word asshole. I mean, the, the thing is like you, you can paint, a narrative in any number of ways, right? Like you, you can, you can easily say Joss Whedon was asked to come in and fix this movie because Warner brothers hated the direction it was going. And they asked him to come in and save it. But all the actors really liked the direction was right. There's a divisiveness there between the actors and the studio. And they mm -hmm. felt like his presence there was to try to ruin the thing they had worked so hard on for months. Right. And so they were mean to him because he was an outsider coming in and changing things and he wasn't even nice about it really like he was just kind of a dick about it and said hey this is my way or the highway buddy and mm. uh you know he is just misunderstood and blah 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 you can paint the narrative that way right like I i'll always say like in my from my point of view like i wasn't there i don't know what happened either side can embellish either side can lie blah 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 i'm not gonna take sides and really i don't really take i'm not gonna take a side anyway like I, I i'm just gonna say it how i feel it is right i have no reason to doubt the accusations made by ray fisher and gal Gadot and everybody else who's worked with whedon i have no reason to doubt those things i have no reason to uh read this and say wow joss whedon is not that bad of a guy like he's being a, a dick like he just yeah. is, he's kind of a piece of shit human being. Right. Uh, and, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say, well, because of that, <clears throat> I have to take a side, right. I'm not going to take a side in this weird professional argumentation, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like that people are either professional or they're not in, 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 in a work environment. And you and I have talked extensively on many mm -hmm. podcasts about toxic work environments and it, it bad work, bad bosses and things like that, right? Yeah. And look, I, I've had bosses that are terrible, but they aren't terrible people, right? Yeah. Um, that's why I feel like you know, I, it's it's hard to say. Well, 
just fuck fuck Joss Whedon and fuck all this and I, I blah 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 or or the alternative which other people say is well Ray Fisher's a crybaby and and Gal Gadot doesn't understand and blah 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 like the thing is like it's it's easy to be on one side or the other but like I don't feel like this is something that even merits taking sides it's just like we all are given the information and you can take that information and say well this is this and this is this and that's yeah. it like you don't have to say i'm i need to stand with these people and, and take a side and take a stand and, and make a difference because it doesn't make any difference right it's not going to change anything it's it's, it's not going to change the past but calling out them for their bad behavior and what they continue to do that can make a difference right like the the, the thing is like i think anybody to, who defends joss whedon in this circumstance or any circumstance mm. regarding his his misconduct and things like that are people that somehow relate to him because they've also done stupid things and they feel like well i'm better now i've i've made mistakes but i'm not that way anymore and they see that in joss whedon that's not who joss mm. whedon is and he's, he's proving that even more with this interview he, he just is a piece of shit human being right like yeah that's okay to call out and, and and that doesn't mean I love Ray Fisher and Gal Gadot all of a sudden, right? I can just say, no, Joss Whedon's a piece of shit human being, and this whole quarrel between them I don't really care about, right? Ryujin yeah. has an angry face in the chat. What is this angry face? I don't uh, know what that is. Captain Grimm. Oh, I think it's like a side eye, like, yo, bruh, you was <laughs> talking some bullshit right now. <laughs> uh, which, is, which maybe is fair, you know? Yeah. No, the um, guy's, uh, he's just... <laughs> Like you said, I, I just think back to the time when we were talking about him before, and you said he was on, like, he was trying really, really hard to get the guy, the actor who's playing Cyborg, to say booyah, you know, and the guy, the actor didn't want to do it. And then the actor, and then, you know, Rafe, he's like, well, you're on contract, so you need to do it. And I remember you said you, he showed up that day, and then like he said his first, he, as soon as he got into the car, he, like, made a Shakespeare line. It was, like, something from King Lear. You know, the line, oh, the line, yeah. you say the line, and I'm like, oh my god, this dude is just an ass. He's literally just, po like, literally throwing gas on the fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's, you know, that's the thing, and it's like, it's easy, it's easy, I think, to say Joss Whedon did this because he's racist, or because he's a misogynist, or because he's xenophobic, or whatever. Like, 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 my... My interpretation of that is like he's just an unlikable asshole who likes to poke the like throw fuel on the fire and just make everything worse. That's just yeah. More I mean, my... I, like I don't I don't really understand the the racist claim. I, I don't know Joss Whedon again. He he could be a racist. I mean like mm. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Right? Like I I know the one of the biggest issues is like he co opted the like feminist movements and stuff like portray himself as like this leader in feminism or whatever and like he's just kind of a piece of shit right like and it doesn't necessarily treat women well especially with what he's admitted to and the things he's done like it's it's very clear but like i i feel like a lot of times people levy things like oh you're a racist you're you're uh, you're xenophobic and like for, for circumstances that are, like, not necessarily those things, and it kind of diminishes what it means to be those things, or, like, legitimate examples of those things, because the people who are against, like, people who are like, oh, you, you know, you're, you're a snowflake, and you just think everything's racism, like, you're pushing those people further in their corners, which I, this is where everything gets difficult, right? Like, because it's like, if you're, if you're super against, like, racists and like people who act that way like you don't actually necessarily care about getting them on your side anyway right yeah. like you don't care about building understanding and getting their you know their you know whatever but the problem is like, we're so divided because there is no understanding yeah there is and no I'll, attempts to to and also a lot of the people that they go like oh you snowflake you liberal you this you that you know those people are also kind of huge pussies exactly uh, yeah, every, uh, yeah that's the thing like when, when you look at extremes on on both sides like they're, they're, they're just the same people like yeah it just... i didn't realize this i i was i listened to the interview uh everyone's 
uh, well, like personally, I think the guy's kind of an asshole. Ben Shapiro, he interviewed Gina Carano, and I guess now he sh- they're making a movie with her. The Daily Wire is making a movie with her. Yeah, I thought that was odd when I when that came. Yeah, out. um, and it's funny because in the interview, she basically says, "Well, I hate bullies," and then she says in her bio, you know, the, her public facing bio that's like blue check marked and everything, supported by the company. Uh, like you know, she sent her her like gender preferences beep bop boop. And then someone said, hey, that's mean. Can you take it down? And they're like, well, you're a liberal snowflake. And then that means that she invited the horde unto herself because it was on Twitter. Uh, and it, it's it, she, and then she said, oh, these people are bullies because they wanted to take down the thing that I was using to make fun of other people. So I'm a bully and I must be allowed to bully other people. But when people bully me, it's not okay. Yeah. And it's it, just... she, also, you know, she sh- I don't think she shouldn't have gotten fired, but I also think that she kind of like, you know, just started jabbing the bear in the eye, I think is a better way to put it. Uh, didn't she like compare like something about wearing a mask to like wearing a Star of David in the Holocaust? Some other stupid shit like that. I, I don't know. At the end of the day, the basically. Is, I don't mind. I don't mind when people post stupid shit that I disagree with. What I, what I, yeah. what I mind is like, when um when like so we want to be famous why but... people are just like people are just um what's the word you know what i'm trying to say like it's odd for um oh my god jesus you want to try to be famous dude you want to buy followers prime and viewers how do you buy what's the difference between a follower and a viewer what the heck that's the idea, isn't it? Uh, I mean, you need both, right? I, I, I would hope viewers are more important because that's and then maybe Prime subscribers, but Prime's free. Well, it's not free because it comes through Amazon Prime, but it's, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, you didn't just click on that link, did you? No, no, no. no <laughs> I, I, did not, I did not click on the link. Don't worry. Okay. But I would say what the point is what I'm saying with Gina Carano is basically is that uh, a that she should have just made a private account where she could have shared all these stupid little memes with all her friends or whoever the fuck. But I guess she wanted she needed to be on her podium and she needed to say these things, which to me makes it seem like that she's kind of an asshole. But you know, whatever. Uh, huge pussy. Yeah, that's the thing is like I feel like a lot of that stuff got taken out of context too. But like. She still isn't right for doing the things she did. But at the same time, like, I don't really care. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. I don't really care what her personal thoughts and opinions are. And I don't really care that she's putting them out there for other people to get mad at. Like, yeah. I'm only interested in what she puts on screen. Uh, Like, her her job is an actress, and that's to entertain. And if that means, if she's a bad person, but she's entertained, I mean... Like that's that's Hollywood is full of terrible people. Like let's be honest, right? They it might is, not always yeah. show it, and you might not know that you're watching. You know, ten, 10, 15 years ago, you love Kevin Spacey. He's your favorite actor. Okay, yeah. well the whole time he was a child molester, right? Like yeah. I, I mean, allegedly. Um, allegedly, <laughs> all charges have been dropped recently. Actually, <laughs> after the mysterious death of one of the accusers, and also the uh, rest of the charges are dropped by other two people. So you know. Allegedly. <clears throat> Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> but but that's, like, the thing is, like, there, there are a lot of bad people. And, like, personally, I like to know they're out there. I like to know what the what what people who think differently than me are thinking and, and why they think that way. And especially, like, you know, there's so many people that are just racist people, but you'll never know. Mm. I want to know. So I can know to avoid you. You know, like, yeah. I'm not going to be friends with, with Gina Carano. But that doesn't mean that she didn't do a decent job in the Mandalorian. I, I don't really care about her character, to be honest, but like, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's its own thing. But my point is like, yeah, she's a perfect example of like somebody who is super right sided, but has a mentality, like the same thought process that everybody on the extreme left has, right? Like they all think the same way, but yeah. in reverse. And also the also most important thing here, the one the, the one thing everyone needs to realize that's tying it all together is that all these people are on social media and they're saying and all these the things. Worst. And they're saying all these things on social media and they're doing all these things on social media and they're getting on all these fights on social media. And they're defending this and defending that on social media. And man, dude, like I just 
don't miss it. I don't miss Instagram. I don't miss Facebook. I don't. I don't miss Twitter. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't. I. It's, I'd rather. I'm just starting to text people more. I'm starting to like you know call people I want to talk to rather than just <laughs> hitting them up on social media or something like that because that's kind of just important. It is. Yeah. But social but media is a, it's yeah. The, the the only thing the only smidgen of like benefit that social media gives you is like if you don't have someone's number or whatever it's really easy to reach out to them right through social media yeah. and yeah. and with mental health being what it is right now it's I, I think it's probably you know the past two years it's been awful mm-hmm. like please reach out to your friends and your family and and even people that are acquaintances you might have their phone number just like just reach out to somebody and just say, hey, I hope you're doing good, you know, but whatever. Like, that, that, all, all, all you have to do sometimes is that, right? Like, yeah, it's very important to check up on people because there, you never know what someone's going through. Someone could be like in a deep, deep depression thinking about taking their life or whatever. And like that message maybe just shows them someone's thinking about them. Someone cares. Yeah. You know, and anybody who knows anything about depression is. Sometimes you just feel like people just don't give a shit about you and nobody cares. So why should yeah. you, right? Like, And you wonder why you're alive. Yep. It's not easy. Yeah. <sighs> like, I mean, you know, I, I, I try to reach out to people. Um, yeah. I think it's important. But, yeah. It is. It, it, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Plus, uh, plus, you're like reaching out to people like me, like, you know, where it seems like, oh, I haven't heard from Adam forever. I hope he's doing okay. And then it's just, yeah, dude, I've just been playing Dota for, like, you know, 16 days. <laughs> yeah, but that's better than, uh, you know, any, something what, else. What I, used to, what I used to be, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, because it, it's, it's, easy, it's easy when you've, you know, been down, been depressed. It's easy to get back in that kind of mindset and, like, yeah, you know, kind of feel like you're walking around with a backpack full of rocks that only you can see, right? Like. A lot of people just don't get it or don't understand or don't see it. So it's not real to them, but it'll always yeah. be real to you. So Exactly. Anyway, any anyway, other news going on? Uh, we'll f- yeah, we'll continue with this. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, do, do, do. Um, yeah, a lot of people are focusing on this English is not our first language like thing and, and maybe trying to say like he's being xenophobic or whatever. I don't know if that's necessarily what it is. Like you know. it's a because uh, like I said like like I know a lot of English second language people and like it's easy to say things that are like I don't know way too American yeah <laughs> or, miscommunication or is a thing that can definitely but, happen but, but even without that like th- there's no reason to bring that up like there's no reason yeah. to bring up she's ESL and like whatever like yeah. all you have to say is like you could you could literally ignore that and just say I tend to be annoyingly uh, you know flowery my speech say that in a better way that's not so pompous yeah um but anyway i'm not his pr person and um, also why did, doesn't gal, have one. why did gal gadot misinterpret what he was saying as i'm gonna kill you <laughs> like right that's a, or like that's well, a huge misinterpretation like you know it's and if like, you know that you're way too over like if if that's your thought like oh this person's first language isn't english yeah. i speak in a weird way why wouldn't your second thought be like let me make my language more palatable to them. Let me help them understand what I'm saying so there's no miscommunication well, and no uh, friction for no reason. Also, when something is misinterpreted between the two of you, the person that is misinterpreting the words isn't immediately thinking, oh, this person's threatening to fucking kill me. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> and something something I've had to learn over many years is like, it doesn't matter what your intention is as yeah. the person speaking. It doesn't matter that I'm not intending to make you feel less than you are. It's not my intention. It doesn't matter that my intention is to express something different than how you took it. What matters is how you took it. Because, like, no matter what, no matter how I meant it, you still felt that way about it because of how it was said or how it came across, right? So, like, intention really doesn't ever matter in the way you talk because the person who felt a certain way about it, there's no changing that feeling, right? You might make them feel better about it later, but like, it's still valid how they felt like, because they felt it. Right. Yeah. Like, and I've had long arguments with people because I used to be like, well, you took it that way. I didn't mean it that way. That's your problem. Not mine. Right. Yeah. 
if I care about that person and the feelings, I should want to make sure that they're okay and want to make sure that I'm making them feel better because I it made also, them feel that way, whether I intended to or not. Yeah. And also, you know, people you have a working relationship with will also ask for clarification a second time, you know, because normally under certain circumstances, you shouldn't assume that the other person just said, I'm going to fucking kill you. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like if, but, the environment was so hostile for her to consider that that was something he said and she wouldn't even need to ask for clarification. It's just, yeah, it's no good. No good. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> what else? Uh, what what the, other news? Uh, Joss Whedon uh, continued. Um, oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Cyborg actor Ray Fisher was one of the driving forces behind opening the dialogue about what happened with Justice League in the public forum. Fisher outright accused Whedon of being an abusive presence on set and even going as far as changing an actor of color skin tone to a lighter shade. However, when it comes to Ray Fisher's claim, Whedon insists that he wasn't alone in thinking Fisher's cyborg performance was, uh, was not up to task. Um, Whedon claims he worked closely with Fisher on all the changes, uh, to Cyborg's role in Justice League and that they had a fine relationship while working on the film. Whedon now insists that Fisher is a malevolent force. We're talking about a bad actor in both senses. Yeah. Saying pretty much like he's whistleblowing, uh, not telling the truth, and also he's just a terrible actor, right? Which it doesn't matter if you believe that or not. Uh, if you think he's a great actor who really made the movie work in Snyder's Cut, or if you think he's a terrible actor, neither of those things matter. I think in a professional environment, you shouldn't say stuff like that ever. You should yeah. never You should never come out in an interview and be like, well, this person didn't like me because I cut their scenes because they suck at their job, right? <laughs> yeah, like, that's something you work out in post with the actor and their agent. <laughs> I, like, even even with, with what... What Ray Fisher said. Ray Fisher didn't come out and say, "Wow, Joss Whedon's a terrible director and mm. a terrible writer." He came out and said, "Joss Whedon did these abusive things on set and in in things that uh, I think were racist or whatever." Like that was his point. He he didn't attack Joss Whedon's like ability to do the job, yeah. right? Like, it, but <laughs> but Joss Whedon just straight up like, "Well, Ray Fisher's a terrible actor. That's why he doesn't like me because I cut his scenes because he sucks." <laughs> like. <laughs> Sounds like a great work environment. Sounds like a play. That sounds like a set you want to fucking be on. Yeah. Um, finally, while well, Whedon doesn't outright. Oh, hold on. Let me bring this back up. <laughs> finally, when out. <laughs> finally, while Whedon doesn't outright blame Zack Snyder for the backlash he received over Justice League, he claims the cult of Snyder Bros did come out of him <laughs> in the filmmaker's name, even after Warner Brothers released Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max last year. I don't know who started it, uh, the online hate campaign. I just know in whose name it was done. Uh, Whedon credits both uh, the timing of Justice League uh, and his ex-wife publishing a scathing letter about him as creating a perfect storm of internet vengeance. The beginning of the internet raised me up and the modern internet pulled me down. The perfect symmetry is not lost on me. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, it turns out the internet is nothing but toxic fanboys everywhere. That's, yeah. that's all, literally all it is. So, there uh, you go. And uh, first of all, I mean, Ray Fisher responded <laughs> mm. with some tweets. Um, yeah, oh boy. <clears throat> uh, so he didn't respond yesterday when this happened. He uh, he said this thing. Uh, Looks like Joss Whedon got to direct an endgame after. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is what he said yesterday. Rather than address all the lies and buffoonery today, I will be celebrating the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The Tomorrow the War Continues. Uh, and then this... Uh, wait, wait, wait. They didn't have today's tweet? Uh, he did tweet today. Hold on. I'll find it. Boop. <clears throat> yeah, just click on his account. There you go. Uh, Not broken. Oh, never this alone. one. <laughs> Do you all remember that time Walter Mata and W B Pictures tried to destroy a black man's credibility and publicly delegitimize this very serious investigation with lies in the press? Oh no, that was uh, nope. That's not what he said today. Here it is. Uh, hold on. One hour. Last thing. Yeah, that was the thing. Uh, but yeah. Oh, Ray Fisher did a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, it looks like he was going on. Going on the warpath. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, before I get started today, I want to thank everyone for lifting and supporting everyone that has been negatively affected by Joss Whedon. I was not the first to speak out about him, but I hope to be the last to have to. The irony is Walter Hamada is probably kicking himself right now for trying to throw Joss Whedon under the bus. Had Walter waited, he would have seen Joss had already bought a round trip ticket to run himself over. Pretty much saying Joss Whedon's interview <laughs> fucked himself. Uh, yeah. which is true. Uh, Joss Whedon has... Uh, had nearly two years to get his story straight. He's like spent tons, if not hundreds, thousands of dollars on PR, crisis management, coaching. I don't think he did any of that, to be honest. And his response to this allegation is, they all misunderstood and or are out to get me. Also, my mom is sexy. Uh, okay. uh, I'm starting a team called the Malevolent Force who wants in Joss Sweden's uh, need not apply. Um, Joss Sweden, I don't threaten people. Who does that? The world, I don't know. Maybe the guy that used to spend his free time plotting elaborate revenges on his own family. Uh, he said, on weekends and in summers, he would pass his morning pacing the long driveway of the family's second home, a farmhouse near Schenectady, making up science fiction universes or plotting elaborate revenges on my brothers. I mean, that's just kid stuff, though. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think that's reached there. Uh, Charisma Carpenter's thing. Uh... Who do, 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 has no agency in determining matters of abuse or race, but for the influence of white male shadow puppeteer. Uh, okay. What is this? This is just a clip. Some of Whedon's vendors proposed a theory. What if Fisher had been doing Snyder's bidding without... Okay, that's all just nonsense. I'm not even going to, yeah, entertain mm. that. Uh, that weird paranoid thing. <clears throat> Last thing. Please don't put me on a pedestal. I've made more mistakes, apologies in life than I can count. Taking accountability for actions and how they may, uh, may have affected others can be some of the hardest work to do, but we must try in earnest to do it. Yeah, I, I agree 100% with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's the thing. Is like, it's important, and I, I'm glad Ray Fisher did it, to acknowledge that we're all human and we all make mistakes and nobody's perfect and it's it's incredibly important to um, to take accountability, but also to not, you know, not destroy people for also making mistakes, right? Yeah. Just hopefully, um, you know, we'll get another Justice League movie and it'll be all good and all the actors will love each other and the director will be great and everything will be awesome and fun and happy and joyful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Charisma Carpenter also responded... Um, she posted hashtag I stand with Ray Fisher, the quote unquote malevolent force and quote unquote bad actor in both senses, who poisoned my feeble mind with trendy buzzwords and corrupt ideas about my experience uh, with a former tyrannical narcissistic, narcissistic boss who is unable to be accountable and just apologize. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? That that that's the whole thing, motherfucker. Just just take responsibility for the stupid shit you said and and, and did. Like that's that's all anybody is 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 really wanting. Like, and even yeah. if you do that, you might not get your your reputation back or whatever. But at least you're showing, wow, I am self aware enough to acknowledge that I've done and said stupid things, and I've been a bad person, and I could be a better person. But instead, you end your fucking article with this nonsense. Hold on, because I read the fucking last paragraph. This yeah. stupid bullshit. Uh, da -da 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 -da. here we go. This this thing, I think I'm one of the nicer showrunners there that there's <laughs> ever been, right? Saying saying, uh, maybe the problem was I've been too nice. I wanted people to love me, which meant I was too direct. People thought I was harsh, right? People had been using every weaponizable word of the modern era to make it seem like I was an abusive monster, motherfucker. You admit that that in some small part you were an abusive monster. Right, like you, can't, that's the thing. That that's the biggest issue, right? You're just a terrible person, and you can't yeah. even acknowledge that you're a terrible person. Like you, this guy has like he is he is the definition of like a narcissistic egomaniac, right? Yeah. His ego is so big, right? That instead of instead of saying, "Wow, I did something that hurt you," his response is, "Well." I'm so smart that I didn't realize that my incredible vocabulary might offend you. And I didn't even offend you. You just took offense to it because yeah. I am way too smart and I don't know what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. Like that works 
in the Big Bang Theory when you're showing Cooper, right? Yeah. But, but but it doesn't work in real life when when you need to be accountable for being a terrible person. Yeah, like, you're right. There are things you could have said too. You could have been like, like Hollywood's a rough business. It, this was a mainstream Warner Brothers set. I had to get this movie fucking done. Like we were on time constraints. Like, and then they told me to cut it, make it work, do whatever I had to do. And so I ran a hard, hardcore set. He didn't even say that. He just said, oh, I'm the nicest fucking director and everyone else is wrong and fuck you. <laughs> it's just, hey, you know, couldn't, so you couldn't even shift the blame to Hollywood is what I'm saying, which is a great, which, which is just some sort of reversal you can do sometimes where you talk about cause Hollywood is brutal business. We're talking about like, you know, George Lucas, who decided not to set up shop in Hollywood because probably because of how shitty it was. Um, it, it's, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the th- the thing I think it, that's important to to acknowledge at this point is like the things Joss Whedon did, like as far as the work he created, the 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 shows he created, whatever else, like you can still watch those things and enjoy them, or you can say, "Wow, I really understand why Xander is such a piece of shit now." in Buffy mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, that's a character that Joss Whedon clearly uh, wrote from the heart in some ways um, or you can say hey I can't watch these things without being reminded of the piece of shit who created them and that's okay too mm-hmm. you can say these things succeeded in spite of him and not because of him mm-hmm. right or whatever it is that helps you or makes you feel however you need to feel if you never want anything to do with anything Joss Whedon did again, that's your choice, and I support that 100%. And if you say, well, I still love parts of those shows, or I still love the first Avengers movie, or whatever else, and you still want to watch them, that doesn't make you a bad person. Uh, there's a difference between art and artist. Uh, there are a lot of very terrible people who are great artists. That's just yep. a well-known fact. Um you know, even going back to Shakespeare, right? People love Shakespeare. Some people think mm. he's really annoying and, and his work it should not be forced on people in schools, but whatever. Um, well, and also he's kind of a sexual <laughs> sexual deviant. But right. Also he, but also, he could chain words together really well. Um, you know, our writer, you and I both love and know. Uh, Tolkien probably yep. has, he he's probably... probably a racist. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> grew up in that time. But yeah, like, and well, in London, the UK at that time, maybe. But well, he let's be honest. Being, London in the UK right now is is still incredibly racist and xenophobic. Yeah, and but also one thing we have to remember back then when hardcore Protestantism was in, uh, extremely homophobic to like you know a degree right. where they should be chemically like they would chemically castrate people back in the day. So uh, it was just it's yeah. But you know, Tolkien would use what uh, Joss Whedon would call flowery language to, uh, to, to you know, he would he would call it like a perversion or, or whatever, right? Like yeah. like Tolkien wouldn't wouldn't uh, outright say like, you know, queer should be murdered or whatever. Like, yeah, uh, that's the, <laughs> like he would he would say in a in a kindly way that he doesn't agree with that lifestyle and that society uh, may be affected by it or whatever. Like whatever stupid talking points that people who dislike people who live differently than them have um yeah. but yeah um but that's just the reality like Tolkien's work is brilliant and and it, the writing is brilliant and and the imagery is amazing and and i love reading it but that doesn't yeah. mean i think Tolkien is the greatest person to ever walk the earth even though like i love the work he's done like that's just the thing george lucas i mean he created star wars star wars has been amazing for for literally billions of people Yep. But that doesn't mean I think George Lucas is a great human being. I, I don't know him. I don't know anything about him, right? Like, yeah, he could be a huge <laughs> asshole. I have accounts. He could be kind of pushy. The thing is, right, we, we, we do know a lot about Joss Sweden, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he just had to tell us in a 60-page interview. Yeah. Hey. So... I mean that's that's the big news. That's the the biggest thing happening is is Joss Whedon's interview, and uh, I, I'll read the whole thing. And if I find anything interesting to talk about with it uh, in future podcasts, then I'll I'll talk about it. But uh, I'm happy not to talk about Joss Whedon anymore because yep. yeah, he's just not a good person. Um, yep. It's not like we're giving him any publicity to our like two viewers, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. And, and I'm sure those people who are viewing all, all already also hate him. So yeah. hopefully they do. Yeah. I mean, I just, I did, I, I find it difficult to hate anybody. Like, I, I mean, for me, it's, it's as, it's as simple as he's a piece of shit, and I don't feel any way about that, and I move on with life, right? Yeah. Uh, but people will feel certain ways, and and if if you feel strongly enough about it to take a stand and to you know do a movement or try to cancel him even more than he's already canceled, or uh, you know, make sure that you're in solidarity with Ray Fisher and, and other victims of Joss Whedon, like, more power to you. I, I think that's that's great. Like, I always think it's good when, when people are motivated to do things, no matter what it is, because it lots of people just have no motivation and, and just walk their lives as zombies. Um, it separates the doers from the donors, is yes. what they say. I mean, um, as long as you're not, like, trying to murder anybody. <laughs> like, yeah, I think, or that is definitely... Like that. As long as your best life doesn't come as the expense of someone else's best life. That's what's most important. Yeah. Specifically murder in that case is like actually comes at the real cost of their whole life. So just don't murder. Just don't, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Tolia says, yup. I don't know what you're yeah. yupping, but... Um, don't murder. Yeah. Don't uh, murder. And just like... Uh, wait, I was going to say something. I lost it. Ah. Uh. Uh, oh, I oh it's about the Gina Carano it. thing, right? Like, there you go. Uh, uh, anybody who says like sites like Twitter and what like the internet are like canceling people, like they have the terms of service. They're not the U.S. government. That they, they they're not infringing on your freedom of speech. Um, I I don't think being deplatformed is the same as being canceled, and I don't think we should conflate our rights given to protect us from the government as corporations preventing us from speaking. Again, I'll say what I said at the beginning of the stream. Big Ooh. business is just as bad as big government, if not worse. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that they don't have every right to do what they're doing, even if it, even if you believe, well, they censor conservatives more than liberals, it, it doesn't matter. That's no. their right as, a, as an organization, right? Uh, I think it's dangerous to to um to uh what's the word i just said uh, uh, uh to uh, uh you know what i'm trying to say yeah uh to censor i think it's dangerous to censor people you disagree with because they'll find other ways to like in other groups to spew their shit with and yep. that's how you get groups like proud boys and stuff because of their created alternative media that they needed to create to talk the way they want to talk and find people who think the same as them. Censoring it makes that more dangerous, I think. But uh, there's room for discussion on all those things. But, hey, they have every right to do it, in my point. And they're not infringing on anybody's freedoms because they're not the they're not the government. Um, but anyway, people seem to misunderstand how freedoms work. So Yeah, and also, you know, the account that got Gina Carano was using, essentially the account was owned by the company it was made by the company meaning an it per personnel made that account for her and set it up for her and then she just goes on and like you know starts posting a bunch of dumb shit and he's like hey could you not do that <laughs> and then just like no this is fascism like we, we it's our it's, technically it's our account we're, we're the one that hit the i accept button <laughs> nicholas says hi hi nicholas i hope uh, you're doing well yeah don't all, listen to us all the way out there in the cold yeah don't we talk to we talk about way too many adult things i'm assuming nicholas is a young child um he is 11 this year so he's 10 oh right yeah de definitely don't listen to us then oh god yeah no keep him away from the stream as far away as possible yeah i mean yeah yeah he sometimes he tells me i cuss too much but that's okay well, that's what happens Bro, do you see my shirt? I got Bosk on it. Bosk, yeah, I was gonna say it looks pretty badass. We're gonna when well, we're gonna get the Bosk show, man. Come on. I don't think we'll ever get a Bosk show. Why not? But you but won't... if we can get like a like a Tales of Bounty Hunter show with like Bosk, Forlom, IG eighty eight, Zuckus, um, yeah, man, I'd be down for that. Yeah. Or... You know what would be really interesting? I don't know if this would ever be created because I think it's so out there and, and dumb because we don't know anything about Jawa culture, but a, a Jawa bounty hunter. Yeah. Like, they probably only hunt droids and break them down for parts and scam their employers all the time, but hey. That'd be dope. 
Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. This is probably the longest episode we've done in like years. So. <sighs> Good. Sorry. It was, uh, yeah. Did a lot of did a lot of stuff today. Did a lot of stuff today. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Got a got a potential new agent coming into the brokerage tomorrow. So I'm excited Ooh. about that. Yeah. Very nice. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been getting a Groupon emails for like 35 percent off California real estate license. <laughs> Test. You should do it, dude. You'd be a great realtor. Don't you have to <laughs> pay for the course before you take the test? It's like 130 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much it costs. I'm not Don't kidding. you have to be like a people person to be a realtor? No, you just need to, you have to remember you're not selling. I'm selling a house, not a car. <laughs> they would, you need to be professional to be a realtor. That's the thing. Oh, uh, okay. You think I'm professional? A, I mean, yeah. You're professional. What do you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, All right, I need to go scratch my gamer itch. It's yeah. getting it's getting really bad. So it just Sounds happens. Good. All right, I'm pal. playing Dota two because I have, have a good night. Oh, thanks okay. everybody for tuning in. Thanks Tune for all the in. chatters. Much love. Yep. Thank you. Uh, re what is her name? Rio Jen. Rio Jen. Rio Jen. Yep. Thank you for uh, your emotes. Uh, much yeah, appreciated. Cool. I'm sorry if I annoyed said. you with any of my takes. Uh, yeah, I know sometimes they're not popular. Uh, Tolia <laughs> says, make Jawa Bounty Hunter show as short episodes. Yeah, like uh, you can do like five minute episodes or something, right? Well, I or, think she said short because Jawas are short. So, uh, Jawa shorts. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Okay, end the podcast. Yeah. Peace out, everybody. Uh, ciao, ciao.